Did you know that 75% of all food varieties have vanished in the last century? Yes, you heard right. The politics of food is more twisted than a pretzel. Now you may be wondering, what on earth happened to all those flavors, textures, and culinary delights? Well, my friends, the answer lies in a bowl of politics served with a side of corporate interests. You see, our food choices shaped by a variety of factors are not as free as we'd like to believe. Big corporations with their deep pockets and influential reach have a significant say in what ends up on our plates. Take for instance our agriculture. It's dominated by a handful of crops. Corn, wheat, rice, soybeans. They're the main characters in this drama. But why? Well these crops are easy to grow, easy to store, and easy to sell. They're the golden children of the agricultural world. But they're not the only children. In the grand tapestry of nature we have a myriad of food varieties each with its unique taste, nutritional value, and ecological role. Yet they've been ousted from the limelight, sidelined by the big players. This isn't just about our taste buds missing out on a cornucopia of flavors. It's about biodiversity. It's about resilience. It's about our health. When we narrow down our food choices, we narrow down the genetic diversity of our crops. And in a world facing climate change, that's not a smart move. Now let's not forget the role of policies. Food policies, often influenced by corporate interests, play a big part in this. They dictate what's grown, how it's grown, and who gets to eat. They decide whether a farmer grows a field of diverse crops or a monocrop of corn. So the next time you take a bite, remember there's a whole world of politics behind that crunch. Organic or conventional, that's the question. But the answer is not as green as you think. Let's dive into the fertile soil of organic farming first. It's the darling of the eco-conscious crowd and for good reason. Organic farming shuns the use of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers, opting instead for natural methods. This approach is a friend to biodiversity, aiding in the preservation of various species while also promoting healthier soil. Sounds rather rosy, doesn't it? But hold on to your compost bins, folks, because organic farming isn't without its own bag of worms. Due to lower yields compared to conventional farming, organic methods often require more land. This can lead to deforestation, a major environmental concern. And while synthetic pesticides are off the table, organic farming isn't a pesticide-free zone. Natural pesticides are used, some of which can be harmful to the environment and even to humans. Now let's turn over the leaf to conventional farming. This method has been feeding the world for decades. It's efficient, producing high yields on less land. An important factor considering our ever-growing global population. It's also cost-effective, making food more affordable for many people. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows on the conventional farm. The use of synthetic pesticides and fertilizers can contaminate water supplies and harm non-target species, upsetting the ecological balance. And while it's a champion in high yields, the intensive methods can lead to soil degradation. In the midst of this green debate, it's important to remember the political influences and lobbying that color both sides of the field. From pesticide producers advocating for conventional farming to organic food companies pushing for their methods, there's a lot of green, and we're not talking about vegetables influencing the conversation. So, organic might seem the way to go, but remember, every rose has its thorn, and every farming method, its trade-offs. So next time you're in the grocery aisle, remember, it's not just about what's on your plate but also the politics behind how it got there. GMOs, they're like the Kardashians of the food world, Everyone has an opinion about them. Let's delve into the world of genetically modified organisms, the frankenfoods that have sparked a global controversy. They're the food equivalent of a superhero movie, full of potential but also riddled with risk. On one hand, GMOs promise to solve world hunger by creating super crops. They're like the food version of Captain America, modified in a lab to be bigger, stronger, and more resistant to pests and harsh weather conditions. Imagine a world where crops grow in abundance, even in the most hostile environments. That's the dream GMOs are selling. But like every superhero movie, there's a villain. Critics argue that messing with Mother Nature could lead to unintended health risks. It's like a food version of Jekyll and Hyde. We tweak a gene here, a DNA strand there, and before we know it, we've created a monster that our bodies don't recognize. The long-term effects of GMOs on human health are still largely unknown, adding fuel to the fiery debate. And then, there's the power struggle. Biotech companies hold the reins, patenting their genetically modified seeds and wielding immense control over farmers. It's a David and Goliath situation, with small-scale farmers often feeling powerless against these corporate giants. 
Critics fear that this power imbalance could lead to monopolies with a handful of companies controlling the world's food supply. But the plot thickens. Despite the controversy, GMOs are almost impossible to avoid in our modern food system. They're in everything from our breakfast cereals to our late-night snacks. It's like a foodie version of the movie Inception, a GMO within a GMO within another GMO. So, are GMOs the heroes or the villains of our food story? The jury is still out. What we do know is that they're a potent cocktail of science, politics, and power. Like them or loathe them, GMOs are a prime example of how science and politics mix in our food. To eat or not to eat meat, that's the question, but the answer might just leave you chewing on more than a steak. You see, when we delve into the world of meat consumption, we're not just talking about a juicy ribeye or the perfect roast chicken. We're stepping into a realm filled with controversies and complexities. Consider this. The meat industry is a colossal machine with a global reach and its impact is felt in every corner of the planet. But what do we really know about it? Well, it's a battleground where health, environment, and ethical issues all clash in a fierce melee. Health-wise, we're always hearing mixed messages. One minute, meat is touted as a prime source of protein and essential nutrients. The next, we're warned about the risks of heart disease, obesity, and cancer. It's like a culinary minefield, and every bite can feel like a gamble. Then there's the environment. Did you know that livestock farming contributes to nearly 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions? That's a hefty carbon hoofprint. Plus, there's the issue of deforestation for grazing land, water pollution from animal waste, and the overuse of antibiotics. It's enough to make you think twice about that next burger. But it's not just about us humans. There are also the ethical considerations. The conditions in which animals are reared can be far from ideal. From overcrowded factory farms to the use of growth hormones, the reality of meat production often contrasts sharply with the idyllic images on food packaging. And let's not forget the political and economic interests. The meat industry is a major player on the world stage, wielding significant influence over policies and regulations. It's a high-stakes game, where profit margins often trump health and environmental concerns. So whether you're a carnivore, herbivore, or somewhere in between, remember, your choice of protein is a political one. Next time you're in the grocery store, looking at that steak, think about the steak at stake. It's not just about what's on your plate, but also the impact of that choice on the world around you. So, we've chewed over the politics of food from farm to fork. Let's digest what we've learned. We started off by unmasking the hidden politics on our plates, shedding light on the complex power dynamics that shape our food system. It's not just about what's on the dinner table, but also about who gets to decide what's grown, how it's grown, and who gets to eat it. We then ventured into the green debate, exploring the controversies surrounding organic and conventional farming. We learned that while organic farming can be more sustainable and kinder to the environment, it's not always accessible or affordable for everyone. On the other hand, conventional farming, despite its efficiency and high yield, can have detrimental impacts on the environment and our health. Next, we dived into the frankenfood controversy, unraveling the complexities of genetically modified organisms or GMOs. We discovered that while GMOs can help tackle food insecurity and increase crop resilience, they also raise concerns about biodiversity loss, corporate control, and potential health risks. Then, we dug into the stake at stake, discussing the ethical, environmental, and health implications of meat consumption. We learned that while meat provides essential nutrients and supports livelihoods, its production is also a major contributor to climate change, deforestation, and animal suffering. Throughout this gastronomic journey, we've seen that the politics of food is not just about nutrition, but also about power, equity, and sustainability. It's about understanding who benefits and who loses out in our current food system and how we can make it more just and sustainable. So, the next time you sit down for a meal, remember that every bite you take is not just nourishing your body, but also casting a vote for the kind of food system you want to support. Remember, every bite you take is a vote for the food system you support. Bon appetit and don't forget to subscribe for more tasty insights.